And, and we touched on it with Ryan about every game's kind of a playoff game from here on out. So, I mean, there's just no margin for error. Uh, it seems like it's kind of how, how it's always been around here with no uh, uh, conference championship automatic. So, I, I mean, how do you coach knowing that? I mean, it's you got your backs against the wall from here on out. Well, I mean, I, it, it depends how you want to look at it. I mean, a lot of team, teams have their backs against the wall. I can tell you right now, University of California has a good football team. They will play in a bowl game. They, they, their reward is already in sight. For us, we don't have that luxury. You know, you have to get the national playoffs in order to do it. And to be honest with you, it's not in our hands. Even if we win out, still not in our hands. You know, so why worry about what you can't control? What you can control is making sure when they have to sit down and select the teams, that we're one of the teams that they talk about. And the only way that that's going to happen is to win this week. And if we win this week, people will start talking about us again. And if we don't, then we don't deserve to be talked about, to be honest with you. But it's a difficult situation, and it's the life in the FCS series, and that's the way it goes, and you play by it. And uh, when you step out of it and you play Ohio University and you play San Jose State and you don't win and you have three losses and you're five, uh, you know, three and three and other teams are five and one ahead, ranked 11th in the nation that you beat, I think that's a difficult pill to swallow just because you're three and three. But that's the way it goes, and you just got to play – uh, each week and not worry about what people are saying or people are writing or what they're going to think five weeks from now. Worry about what you can control today. Based on all that, Tim, do you feel like or do you need to beat Dixie State by a substantial margin? Nope. I think we need to win. Yeah, you know, Montana State beat them 23-21. Is that going to be enough to get Montana State in the playoffs if they come in second in the big sky? Yeah, it will be. They'll get in if they come in second in the big sky and with a 23-21 to win over Dixie State. So win. Is the bottom line thing. So I'm not worried about how much we win by. And to be honest with you, I wasn't worried too much about it the other night at about 9 o'clock. I was worried, concerned that mm -hmm. they were going to kick it. I was concerned they were going to go for two, and we were reeling at that particular point in time. And I give them a lot of credit for it. But we need to win. And I think as long as we keep winning, then we can keep having this conversation each week, mm -hmm. and we'll see if we're still having it in week 12. If you were Southern Utah, would you have gone for two? Yeah, that's a tough call on the road. But on the road, you got the home team. I, we were – 90, we played 90 plays on defense. Our guys, we were tired. I'm not gonna, you know, we have guys that play 90 plays, and Jim would know as well as I know how many of them practice. Not many of them are practicing full speed right now of those 90 guys. And we're nicked up, and we got guys playing that don't get a lot of snaps. Was probably, if you were going to do it, probably a good opportunity to do it. But I wouldn't second guess a coach because I've made enough of those calls myself in my past, too. I mean, he's got, he, they, maybe he just felt like we would have had to play another 10 plays in, in overtime. And, uh, you know, and I think their kicker's a pretty good kicker watching them warm up before the football game. So he's probably thinking this game's going to overtime and they're kind of wore out and we'll beat them. So why make it a one-play game when I can wear them out some more and beat them in, the, in, the, in overtime? So I, I totally understand where he's coming from. Uh, they've done a great job at Southern Utah. I think they have a good football team. I have a lot of praise for that quarterback. He's an excellent player that knew how to distribute the football. Coach, it seems like no matter who you stick in there, you'll be able to run the ball. But that being said... Um, how worried are you about the passing offense, and what are you doing to try to establish some continuity? Really, I'm not really worried about it because the bottom line thing is you have to start with who you are. We are a triple option running team. That's who we are. You know, and uh, no offense to what they were in the past. I mean, they had guys that you could throw the ball up to, and the guy made some plays. I'm, you know, I think Tony, Jonathan Daly is a great player, but you know, he'd be probably the first guy to say that Ramsey Barton was a pretty good player too. You know, so, I mean, and we would have some good players, but we haven't been real healthy at wide receiver. We haven't been real healthy at quarterback, and we have not been real healthy at offensive line, slot, or fullback. So you're starting with a football team that realistically has had injuries at every single position. So we're going to do the things that we know we can do best without trying to get so creative that we don't look like a good offensive football team at all. And people understand, I mean, if you have 230 yards rushing in 57 plays, that's not bad when 50 of them were runs and two of them were taking knee at the end of the game. You know, I'm, pr I'm pretty, feeling pretty good about six yards of carry in what we do on offense. We need more touches than we had the other day. So, yeah, I'd like to be able to throw the ball better and like to be a little bit more explosive on the offensive side of the ball. But I'm good with being who we can, can be, too. And I think that we're getting better at that part of the game as far as running the triple option and doing the things that we have to be able to do to run the ball and win, win some games. So, you know, four out, four out of seven isn't that bad either, especially when one of them is fourth and three. Last one. Uh, you saw when you saw that ball just hook left outside the post. I mean, what was that? What was the, your first thought after that missed field goal? Well, I mean, I just you know for for us and where we were, and particularly in our season, you know, it was a pretty good feeling. I felt real good. But I also have been on the other side of the fence. Our football team has been on the other side of the fence, so I think it's a great relief. And I think that down deep, if you asked our guys, 
they know exactly how that other team feels. And uh, it's not a great feeling when you give everything you have and play as hard as they did. I mean, I have tremendous respect for our opponent. You know, and I think that they played a good football game, and that game probably should have went to overtime. And then let the best team, like he said, let the best team win in overtime, and who knows what happens. But with the way it went down and the ball went left, it's a pretty good feeling that we didn't have to play another 10, 12 plays because, like I said, we were, we were fatigued on the defensive side of the ball. Thank you, Coach. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys.